Hi, I'm Craig Mokowski at Timeform US for this week's edition of Out of the Gate. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the inclusion of Timeform US bits and speed figures into the DRF formulator product, something I'm very uh, excited about. I like to use both products for different reasons. And having them all in one place in formulator can save me some time and hopefully you as well. Plus, I think it's a really good addition as far as quality of handicapping. So let's take a look at it. And uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, see, show you how to turn it on so you can see the pace figures. I'm using a desktop version on my uh, laptop. There, there's different versions of formulator out there, but they're all pretty simple. And all you got to do is go to the part where it says filters, which I've highlighted here. Uh, go to the view part and make sure the Timeform US pace figure line is checked. Uh, press save and you should have them. Uh, and you will see uh, what we're going to see in the horses I talk coming up, where you get a pace figure line for each race for every horse. Uh, turt, turf, doesn't matter. They're all there. Uh, as long as it's a race that was timed, then it is not at some crazy distance. It's not normally run. You're going to get pace figures for the calls, for every call. I'm going to look at all the winners from the stakes races on San Anita, not for any particular reason, just they were the first horses that came to mind, and I know they all show some of the features. Uh, the first one was Giant Expectations, who was an upset winner of the Grade 2 San Antonio. Uh, he did it going wire to wire. And the first thing you'll notice about him is a lot of the, the pace figures are in uh, slow pace. They're in blue, indicating that the pace was slow. Uh, what you see is the Pace figures for the race are on the left-hand side underneath the times. Uh, for example, in his latest race, he went 22.94 for the first quarter, and that equated to a 117 time form U.S. pace figure. Uh, to the right, you actually get what the horse ran to that call. In this case, uh, Giant Expectations was 11 lengths off the lead, and he got an 85. Uh, and the one thing to notice, it's a really unlucky horse. You're not going to see uh, these kind of PPs very often. Uh, there's just nothing but blue fractions, which we only show the, the blue and the red fractions for about 30% of the races, I believe. Uh, and that's both of them combined. So for this horse to keep getting blue after blue for a horse who's a bit of a closer was surprising. Uh, what was more surprising was how on uh, Malibu Day on Tuesday, he actually took the lead out of the gate and went wire to wire, setting a really slow pace. So he did finally catch a break and paid a big price. But, you know, the thing to see is it's kind of an in-race bias where you see uh, the pace was slow. So horses coming from off the back are going to have a tougher time. Uh, and horses on the lead should have an advantage in those kind of races. Uh, the next horse we're going to look at is Bowie's Hero. Uh, he won the Grade 2 Mathis Brothers Mile. Uh, a little later on the card and um, something I neglected to mention with the previous horse giant expectations is the uh, time form US pace early in uh, time form US early and late speed ratings I have them highlighted on Bowie's hero in yellow you can see the 76 and the 109 so he's definitely kind of more of a closer horse uh, you can see by the higher late pace rating uh, that does depend on surface and distance uh, there's some more available on our site uh, these have been available in DR printed PPs for a while and classic PDF PPs, but they're now making their way to formulator. And keep in mind, these are an overall rating based on more than just one race. They're based on the, the best of the last five, not just one best, but it could be uh, multiple races, but not all of them of the last five. And what you see with Bowie's hero here is he is definitely a horse who has done best in the past when he gets a fast pace. I've kind of highlighted those. They're the fractions in red all the way down at the bottom when he um, he won the Del Mar Juvenile Turf Race. He came back later, won the Singletary Stakes. In all of those races, he was well off the pace. The fractions were red. They were hot, and it set up nicely for him. And you'll see he's that's the only time he had won before Saturday when he got a fast pace. Now, he did show a new dimension on Saturday, uh, the the Runner-up set a slow pace. Boomy Zero was able to stay a little bit closer. That was well, quite a bit closer than he normally does. It was a good ride by Jockey Kent to keep him up close, and he was able to still finish very strong and win. So it'll actually be the first time he did not win. That he didn't need red fractions to win a race. But he is a horse to, uh, the, who's improving. He, he showed some more speed. But the key here is just note that the race shape, if it sets up in the reds, you're going to like closers. They should run the best, and you're looking for horses that maybe ran good against the grain of the pace. 
Uh, the next horse we're going to look at is Unique Bella, who won the uh, the name is escaping me the Grade One uh, Seven Furlong race for Phillies, uh, three year old Phillies, and she shows a little bit of both. Uh, you can see way back when she broke her maiden. Uh, she actually didn't br before she broke her maiden. Her first career loss. Her first race was a loss. And you could see right away she was a horse that had some talent. The pace was really slow that day, as you'll note by the blue fraction. She ran a 75. Or the race was a 75 and an 89. She was well off of that. She still closed to be second, made up some ground despite the uh, the horses up front having a big advantage. She got second, and we all know where she went from there. She went on a tear where she was winning quite a few races before she got uh, injured while pointing toward the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, she didn't make the Oaks, and she had some time off. She came back in October and I think her two return races kind of show the the power of what these figures can can do uh, her first race back she was in a race where she really overmatched the field the grade three LA woman at Santa Anita and uh, the pace was slow but she was able to lay off of it which showed she is a horse who can raid a bit uh, she didn't need to be up front despite the fact they were going slow uh, that only 97 she ran an 88 to that point and uh, she was still able to win easy, as was expected. But then she jumped right in her second race back in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. And it was a, pr a pretty tough trip. Uh, she was dueling on the lead. Uh, the fractions were not, they're red. And I mean, you can see by the numbers, it was a hot pace. We had a 143 opening quarter, and the final time figure for the race was only a 114. Um, I'm just now learning about the pace ace. I know a little bit about it, but I kind of highlighted here because it also said that that race, the whole flow of the race favored closer. So it makes it kind of clear. Everything was against her that day. She battled for a while before giving up, uh, finished seventh, beating seventh lengths. But I think the fraction show was a much better effort. It was also some talk of the rail not being so good on Breeders' Cup Day uh, that day. I happen to agree with that. She, she probably just had a really tough trip. And she came back and... Once again, in this race, she rated really nicely the La Brea. The name just came to me. Rated really nicely in the La Brea, which she had proven she could do two races back. I sat a bit off the pace, closed into it. It wasn't a crazy fast or crazy, crazy slow pace. And she won pretty easily as a six to five favorite and showed she's back in top form and probably going to be a horse to deal with all year long for the uh, older fillies and mares. Uh, the last horse I want to look at is uh, City of Light from the Malibu. Uh, this horse was a bit of a surprise to some, but he actually had quite a bit going for him if you looked at him from a pace figure, pace figures perspective. Uh, his last running line, he was beaten by Dabster in the race, but I think it was pretty clear he was a better horse than Dabster that day. He, uh, you can see the red fractions, are, they're clear as day. He was right up on the lead. And one thing I do look for in those is that is the pace was contested. Uh, I'm a little less uh, likely to give an excuse for a horse who's up on the lead in a fast pace if they're doing it by themselves. Horses running clear tend to tend to have an advantage, even if they're going a little bit too fast. But this horse dueled. He put away his competition. You see he opened up by two lengths only to get run down late. But he, he just looked like a very strong horse coming into the Malibu. And one other thing to note with him is the time form uh, U.S. early speed rating, his 117, was well clear of everybody else in the field. The next highest was a 101. So it looked like despite drawing the inside, really wasn't going to have too much trouble making the lead. And that's exactly what he did. And he was able to win pretty easily. Uh, if you want to learn some more about Timeform U.S. Speed Figures and Formulator, there are a couple pieces out there. What I did is just uh, highlighted, use the search button. You click on that from the home page, type in Timeform U.S. Formulator, uh, press submit. And then when you go to the next page, the uh, first uh, two of the first three articles that pop up are recent editions. One talks about the figures in Formulator. And then there's a Q&A with myself where some more, little more in detail questions are asked about the figures. Uh, so hopefully I covered most of that there. And if that doesn't work for you, if you have any questions that I haven't covered or more that you want to see, you can always come to Twitter and uh, ask me there. I'm always happy to answer questions. My handle there is at TimeformUSFig. So look forward to hearing from you and answering any questions that you might have or just discussing racing 